what is going on guys? It's your boy Siso here, bring guys yet another video here today, bring guys the most requested tutorial I've had on my channel a very long freaking time, the 2D Silhouette Intro, basically the same intro I've been using for the past two weeks or so, and you guys really been freaking loving it, all that crazy stuff, so right at the top of the bat, before the actual intro starts, the actual order, the scene of the tutorial starts, uh, freaking the person that I'm about to say, would this video would not be possible, there would be no new intro, no new anything like that, the original person who made my intro took the time out of his day to teach me how to do it, that way I can teach you guys how to do it, his name is Blue Concepts, if you guys have yet to check him out, uh, his Twitter and his social media, uh, or basically his Twitter and his uh, YouTube is in the description down below, please go check it out, please go subscribe, please go follow him, all that cool stuff, because of course without him, there would be no intro that you guys love, the new intro that you guys love, and he would, there would also be no freaking tutorial that's happening happening today so please go ahead and follow him all that cool stuff hope you guys enjoyed today's video please like be, like be wary i'm not the best illustrator or excuse me the best after effectser if that's not a word the best in after effects so this is like my first tutorial in after effects many more to come of course because this is actually a lot more fun than i thought and uh yeah just let me know what you guys think also let me know what in the comment section down below what you guys want to see me do all that cool stuff don't forget to like on the video equals a secret down below and i'm gonna pass you on over to the actual tutorial clip peace all right, guys, let's get this thing going. So basically, I don't know what I said in the previous clip because that's in the future and your boy is not in the future at the moment. So basically, of course, we're doing the silhouette intro, right? So I'm going to make like just right off the bat, of course, this is After Effects. So if you guys don't have After Effects, it's basically it's in your creative cloud. If you guys have creative cloud, all that cool stuff. So uh, first off, of course, you're going to obviously need a scene. So uh, pretty much like if you guys know already, a scene is basically what I have currently right here. So in the description down below should be these like seven files, eight files of uh, basically like, these, uh, these, uh, silhouette landscapes that you basically put together. I also have them numbered so you can actually put them in numerical order. That way you're not, you know, confused of what's goes where and kind of like kind of stuff going on. So basically if you guys know how to make silhouettes, I'm gonna show you guys in a second. However, just so you guys get the gist of what's actually happening here. Um, this is actually the scene in PNGs without actually being in motion that we have currently over here, right? These are all the PNGs as you can see now in motion, Lo logo flies in, all that cool stuff, right? Those are all just these things right here. Now, really quickly, I'm just going to show you guys, this one is one of them, right? So obviously all these different uh, images here have a different shade of this cool little navy blue going on here. So of course, this first one here, so so for OC, uh, OF1, uh, oops. OCOF14, right? So that's the hex code for this right here. And basically, what follows is basically a uh, more of a lighter tone going all the way out toward the uh, the foreground, or excuse me, the background of the actual scene. So that's what's going on here, right? So this, of course, is basically like a silhouette of a mountain with trees here. Of course, the other one has a different uh, a, a different peak point, which basically I mean like uh, this first one here has like a very like you know narrow little peak point that kind of like has a valley look to it. This this one behind it. Uh, different shade of blue, of course, has a more higher peak, uh, so on and so forth. One is just more focused on the right-hand side. This one over here is like, you know, focused on, a, you know, a nice little middle portion of it, higher than, of course, all these other peaks, yada, 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 right? I'm just going to, like, just give you the gist of what's happening here. So, basically, to create these things yourself, if you guys want to do them yourself, uh, like I said already, I'm going to change mine a little bit, manipulate mine just a little bit more before I give them to you guys. That way, we don't have the same exact intro floating around on YouTube, uh, you know, for my sake, unless you want to make your own. So, really, we're going to make your own. Very simple stuff here. You can pretty much just use a brush, right? You can use a brush and kind of, like, draw out what you kind of want. You can use the pictures that I gave you as a reference if you guys wish to, um, or I can show you guys another way as well. But, basically, you can just basically take your, your brush and kind of, like, you're pretty much like painting your own little landscape and kind of like, you know, it, it really depends on what your vision is for your, your actual little silhouette intro. This can be your mountain ridge or whatnot, it can be your hill ridge, whatever the heck you guys want it to be. And then all you have to do is set up, uh, you know, uh, brushes, I almost said bushes. No, it's bushes actually, it's not brushes. I don't know why I like, like went like that, but bushes and kind of have bushes and trees on your ridge line, make it look more cool, look more realistic, more, you know, dope by the way. Uh, also, if your brush is not as smooth as mine, if you just click right here, this brings up your little brush tab here and make sure your spacing is down like, you know, 5% or so. If yours is up more, which is okay, because if you're looking for more of like a, a like a sketchy kind of like mountainous ridge, you might want to have these like little ribbles in your brush. But if you don't want these, if your brush is not smooth like this, all you have to do is change your spacing, go down as you can see here, the preview, it makes it more smooth. And that's kind of what you guys, if you guys want it, uh, that is how you do that. Then to get rid of it, just move that out of the way. And so that's one way of doing it. You can paint your own ridge, uh, paint your own 
uh, silhouette, like, like, manscapes, uh, manscapes, <laughs> what? Mountains, mountainscapes, there we go, what, is manscaping a word, that is a word, actually, we're gonna stop talking about that, but yeah, if you wanna do, if you don't wanna do that, what you guys can do is also type in and Google mountains transparent, that's what I typed in, I found this really cool image here, um, one of many, of course, that just has, like, transparent backgrounds of mountains, and, like, the mountains peak, stuff like that, so if you guys wanna, like, build your own kind of, almost like a collage, you can also do this, right, you take your little background here, uh, you know, kind of set it up the kind of way I had it for the actual settings here. Uh, basically, double click on the layer, change it to layer, bring up your layer styles, right? Change your color overlay to whatever color you guys had selected, right? That nice little blue or whatever. And then you can do something like this. Basically, that's, that sets up your silhouette as well if you guys want to do that. And then just like kind of get more peaks in, you know, Google or whatever. You can do that possibly. And of course, to get trees and stuff like that, I just typed in pine tree and Google got this little tree stock here. Uh, basically, it's of course, it's it's not uh, transparent yet. So I'm going to do, I'm going to select color range. I'm going to select white. And as you can see here, this selects all the white in here uh, in the actual picture. Press OK. Rasterize this layer. That way I can actually press delete on my keyboard. And it gets rid of all the white in the actual picture. That way I can double click on it. Go to my color overlay. Change the same color to the actual background here. Uh, foreground here. And then what I'll do is I'll just probably control J a couple times. That way I can fill in these other white spaces. Right? Just like so. And then control E. Merge it all together. And then just shrink it down with uh, shift tab. And then pretty much just shrink it down. Like kind of fix and fiddle with it. I'm not trying to like use so much time on this, right? Because I'm expecting that you guys already know how to make silhouettes. But if you guys don't, this is kind of like the really quick, very quick gist of how to do it. Now, I think we're good to go. I think I just wanted to get that out of the way. Make sure you guys know where you can make your own silhouettes those ways. And uh, pretty much just, it's after that, after that, it's pretty much just all up to you. It's all up to personal preferences, what you kind of want to have to do and all that cool stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's go into After Effects. And let's get this freaking thing going. Now, I'm just going to pretty much delete. Do I want to delete everything? I could. Well, I'm going to make, a, of course, a new composition first. By the way, the images that I'm going to be giving you guys are 1920 by 1080. So they will fit perfectly in your composition if and when you change your width and your height to 1080 or 1920 by 1080. Frame rate 60 frames per second. Press OK. That's a new composition. Now, I want to delete. Uh, can I, like, make a new folder? We'll just type this old. And we're going to put all these in here and here to this old one. That way, I'm just going to drag in all the new ones here. Basically, you're going to have something like this, right? I'm going to give you something like this in the, uh, in the description down below. I'll drag these all in here. Let's move this, like, not whatever. It can stay there. That's fine. All right, cool. So now I basically have what you kind of have in your actual uh, file management here. So what you're going to do is we're going to take the first PNG here, which is going to be, of course, the actual first silhouette of our awesome, cool little uh, landscape thing going on here. So <clears throat> to get this thing started, pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to actually start off with, of course, making the actual first transition where it kind of has, it looks like we're, we're going over a ridge line, right? So we're going to do something like that first. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and go to like move our actual time frame to three frames. I was basically like three seconds, right? So I'm gonna click around here, make sure I have it like somewhere around here. And I'm gonna go ahead and press P on my keyboard, which actually is the position, not the pen tool, um, as normal if we're in Photoshop, but for position, right? And we're gonna make sure we keyframe that right here at three frames or three um, seconds rather. Um, so that way at the end of this actual transition that we're gonna be doing, it stops here and it ends right here where we want it, right? So also, and really quickly, just, just so I can say this, um, if you guys don't have the actual same image size, like the 1920 by 1080, if you made something different, a different size, a different uh, resolution, basically, if you want to you go ahead and make sure that it fits the frame perfectly, like how I have it, uh, how I have it here, and not just kind of like, you know, kind of mess around with and try to fix it. What you can do is right click, uh, transform, fit to composition. That way it actually fits the entire, you know, the actual uh, composition of your screen. And that way it's, it's a little more clear, clear point to kind of, you know, get what you kind of want. Now, Anyway, back to where I was talking about the position, right? So it's going to stop here. But what we want to do is we're going to go out to the beginning of the actual uh, time uh, line. And we're going to actually change the position here, this one right here. And we're going to bring this up and bring this out of the actual canvas, out of our composition. Bring it just so it kind of stops right, like right at the edge, right? Basically right there. So basically what's going to happen here, if I just quickly render this out, it's going to do something like this. It's just going to, you know, slowly come in nothing different no easy ease nothing like that we're gonna put easy ease in a second uh basically just a simple transition point a to point b and that's kind of the, the the gist of what we're gonna be doing for the actual rest of this actual thing um 
So really quickly, I was talking about easy E's. As, as you can see, this is very, very simple. It's like I said, point A to point B, all the same speed, yada, 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 right? But if I go ahead and just uh, hover over these actual keyframes, just click, hover over them, make sure I have them selected, right click on one of them, keyframe assistant, and go to easy E's or press F9 on your keyboard. I'm just gonna go ahead and just click on easy E's. And then if you go to your graph editor right here, which is basically this little uh, tool right here on your, uh, around where your toolbars are, graph editor, you can bring this up. So basically what this is actually indicating, uh, this little graph here is actually indicating um, the speed of which is what's happening, right? So it's, it's a very simple, nonchalant, just a very simple arc, meaning it's just point A to point B with no, no kind of like, no manipulation to the actual speed of how it's happening. So if I just kind of manipulate this right here, I'm gonna take one of these and just push them into the, the right and take my right one, push them into the left. If you guys remember before, it, just, it was like a very simple kind of transition, but when I do it now, it's kind of fast and then slow. That's kind of what's happening here when I use the actual uh, graph editor to actually change the time intervals of which uh, the actual points are moving from point A to point B. So if you guys get to understand that, you can manipulate this as well as you want it. You can just kind of keep playing with it, have fun with it. But for right now, I love the fact that it's coming in you know, kind of like slow a little faster and then slow back down. That's just basically what the graph editor is. And that's what you're manipulating when you actually move these points uh, from the left to right or, you know, however, which way you decided to move them. So to get out of it, of course, just click back on the graph editor and you're good to go. So basically that is the beginning of our actual time frames here for the actual composition for our cool little scene. And I'm also going to drag in this PNG, this BG PNG. That way we actually have a background going on. So. What we can do now is we're going to add a solid. So basically, I don't have yet the cool little transition where we kind of looks like we're going over a ridge. That way, we're going to use a solid for that. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to right click and go to new and I'm going to go to so uh, <coughs> excuse me, solid here. If you guys want to do that, press control Y. It brings it really quickly up. And what you can do is take your eyedrop tool here and just click and make sure you click the same exact color as your first PNG that is coming down that we just did, right? So I'm press OK. That way, our solid here is going to be looking like this. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the solid's below the first PNG, and we're gonna go ahead and make sure we press P on our keyboard for the position, and we're gonna keyframe the position right here, just like so, for the beginning. We're gonna make sure it stays right here in the beginning, but when we go to three frames, or three seconds here, right, we're gonna change our position and just drag this the opposite way. We're gonna drag this down. Drag this down, that way it's off the canvas. I'm looking at this little red, uh, this little red here, which basically indicates where I'm looking at. I'll just move it down. Just, why not? Just zoom out with my little uh, my mouse tool or my, my, my scroll wheel. So you can see I'm just trying to move it out of the frame. Something around here is pretty perfect, right? So basically what's happening is it's just moving down without this one. I'll just show you guys without actually seeing the first PNG. It's basically a solid moving like a screen. So it's kind of like a reveal, right? So basically what I'm ha what's happening is we're going to actually make it so that it catches up with the actual landscape. That way it looks like the original uh, example where it's looking, it's going to look like it's actually coming like over a ridge. So to do this, obviously we're going to have to put easy ease on as well. Because as you can see right now, my solid shape is just moving from point A to point B, just like before where this one was just moving to point A to point B, but it's not looking cool because it has no easy ease to it. So what you have to do, of course, is highlight these keyframes, right click on them, uh, oops, I, mean, I missed it. Uh, right click on them, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now basically you still have to go to the graph editor because of course it's still point A to point B with a simple motion. So I'm gonna click on one of them, use my graph editor. And this is what's gonna get kind of tricky. It's gonna be a little hard for me to explain, but as you can see, as I said before, it's not the same exact uh, speed as the actual landscape here coming down. So you can see this big gap here. Basically you wanna kind of find out where the biggest point of the gap is. I would say like right here. And then you just wanna kind of figure out where you would have to place these markers. Here. I'm gonna move this to the right. I'm gonna make sure to do something like this, right? So I'm gonna kind of connect them. And this is kind of like a guessing game. Right now I'm gonna say to myself, what's happening here? It's not too big of a gap. Uh, oh, boom, right here. You see this big line right here? It kind of gets rid of our, or covers up our silhouette. So I'm gonna go to like here. I would say where it kind of like before it goes back down. So I'm like around here. Take this right point, move it to the left, and get rid of like, so it, I wanna see the actual silhouette. Like, boom, right? So let's see what that looks like. So it's going out here, it's kinda like a big gap still, we'll fix that, but no longer this big like, all this obvious solid like flat line. And we're gonna have this, uh, we'll do something like that. No, we're gonna wanna bring this back in. I think we're gonna move the left one 
to the right more. That way to something like this. Let's get rid of this. Uh, like it's a very big trial and error thing. Here we go. What's that look like? It's not completely terrible. We're gonna fix this a little bit. Now that's not terrible. Now there's still this little line here, what's going on. I'm just gonna probably just fix this a little bit, just as much as I can. This is not terrible. This is actually pretty good that I have this little obvious straight line right here. I'm not gonna stay on this forever, but you can see how I'm manipulating it, making sure I can zoom in, by the way, by just scrolling this over to get more fine adjustments, which is what I'm gonna be doing. There we go, let's see what that looks like. All right, perfect. Oh, it's not solid here, however. Let's make sure that that is solid there. Um. All right, cool. So after like obvious trial and error, I got a pretty good composition here of where it kind of like doesn't show too much flat area here. I'm just going to be fine with that for now because I don't want to work for this for like ever, but that's obviously the motion of like, or not the motion, the 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 skill or more or less the, the experience or just like the overall grind of actually, of course, creating this little cool little ammun uh, animation. I don't know why almost an ammunition, but for sure. But as you can see, I still have this little bit of a line here. So basically, the cool little way of I fixed that was all I had to do was click on this little dark here, which basically is the 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 sh uh, whoop, the solid. And I'm gonna hold shift and uh, uh click on this, hold shift, click on the point here, and I'll just hold alt as well. And make this a little bit more bigger. And this is basically what's what it's doing is actually scaling it a little more bigger. That's kind of what I want to do. That way, it looks something like this, and I kind of get rid of that little line there because of what I did, which is I just made the actual solid bigger. Now, I hope you guys understood that. I can still see, of course, there's a little line here that's going on. But like I said already, I don't want to like continuously like keep flirting with it because it's going to be kind of annoying. But like in a way, if you guys want to, like I said, just keep trying to mess around with it and kind of like get what you want to get. Oh, I kind of got rid of it. Cool. Cool. So, all right, perfect. That looks good. Now I'm finally done with that. And now we finally have our first little kind of transition that's complete where it kind of looks like it's going over the ridge. And now you have, of course, have to put everything else in here. So I'm going to start off with at least um, number two, which is the second PNG here. We're going to drag this below the dark, uh, this little dark. I'm just going to call this, I'm going to rename this as solid because I don't know why it says dark. Drag this below the uh, solid. I said it again. <laughs> and there we go, right? We got this now. So basically, we're going to obviously do the same exact animation, but for the uh, the one back here. So at three frames here, uh, by the way, this is We'll keep that for now. I don't know why. I think I moved this in graph editor, but three frames is where I want to stop this at, right? So I'm going to click on the second PNG, click on the position, and I want to make sure it stops here at three frames, right? So at the beginning, however, I'm going to get rid of this really quickly so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to change this one. That way, this actually goes down as well. I'm going to drag this down. I'm dragging the position down, by the way. I press P on my keyboard to bring this up again. Drag this down unless you, until you can't see this anymore, like the ridge. And right there, perfect. So what's happening is this one's going to be coming up as well. Wireless in the background here. What's going on is these are also coming with a little transition what we just did in the first place, right? So of course, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to obviously easy ease this as well. So right click assistance, easy ease, click on one of them or both of them doesn't really matter. Graph assist, graph editor, and just like kind of move these in, right? To get a nice little, a smoother transition. Okay, so what I'm gonna do really quickly 
is just kind of show you what's going on here render this out really quickly also i find to say this already the render preview is up here and also if you just want to change this from full you might you might yours might be at full and it might take you a little longer to actually render it out has, has nothing to do with your ram of course you need to have good ram but if you're just taking a little too long just fix that just by going to just changing this to this kind of like a preview to half right or third if it's a little too slow still and there you get more faster renders by the way so right now you can see it looks like it's coming up very nicely with a cool little easy ease and that's what you kind of want to have right it looks good that way i love it and basically now what we can do is just drag in all the other uh pngs here so three to seven is what i need drag these all in here and then basically what's going to be seeing is just you're going to see like everything still st stationary in the background however this these two first ones are still moving it's just kind of give you the basics of the idea of what we're going to do so next up we're going to do is copy all these other pn uh all these little keyframes these two little keyframes on the second PNG, which is this the, the 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 last one we just did, right? This one right here, the little animation that we just did, and we're gonna press Control C, right? Control C on your keyboard is gonna pretty much copy the keyframes, and we're gonna shift click on all these. So click on this number three, hold shift, click on number seven, and then Control V to paste it. Now, if you don't know already, to hide and unhide your keyframes is pressing U on your keyboard. That's the shortcut to actually hide and unhide your keyframes, as you can see, right? So basically, what you're gonna see here is What's gonna happen is where I copy them, let's put this all the way here at the beginning. Make sure to copy it. Make sure you copy the keyframes and actually line them up perfectly. So what's gonna happen here is it's gonna come up, come up, come up, and all these other ones are coming up at the same time. We don't want this. Right now I'm gonna make sure I hide, uh, we'll hide this keyframe because we don't need this one anymore right now. We don't need solid one, we don't need number one. Right now we wanna see all the keyframes that we just need to edit right now. So pretty much what I want to kind of do is just take the last keyframes. You're just going to be moving the last keyframes. And this is all personal preference, right? How you want to have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make a stair, right? So I'm just going to kind of make a stair really quickly. That way what's going to happen is these are going to come in in like a, like almost like a stair transition. Let's see. This one. Let's do it like this. Right, so what's gonna happen is gonna go like something like this. And it's all gonna come in like oh, it's kind of like the same. You kind of see what's going on. It's gonna be it's gonna be like up, 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 up. So that's what these little stairs is doing, right? You see that? It kind of gives that motion where it kind of looks like you're going over the ridge. Because if you didn't have them as a stair, if they were all like like you know stationary like like this again, I'm just gonna show you guys what I mean, so that you guys understand. Right? It's just all going to be coming up at one motion. It's going to look very awkward. But if you come it up with a stair, it looks a lot cooler and a lot better. Right? Just like so. It kind of looks like you're, you're still trying to peek over the ridge. And that's kind of what you want to have. So, yeah, you can say, like, if you want more one to come in more faster, like, if you want this, I kind of want, which one is it? It's not seven. It's not six. Five. I kind of want five to come in a little faster than all the other ones. So, I'm going to move this in a little bit more. So I kind of want to have it so you can see that number five, right? Because it's a bigger peak than everything else. And it looks like it's doing this. Perfect. So I don't know if you guys understand what I just did. I just literally copied the keyframes from the, the last one we just did before previously, this one right here, and um, pasted them. So I just also made a little stairs you can see, but I manipulated. So I wanted to have like number five, which is this blue one here, because it's the highest peak in the scene, right? I wanted that to peak out a little bit before all the other ones. That's why I moved this last keyframe up more to the left which is basically speeding up the transition to it to come up right because what i did was all the other ones are doing the same exact thing they're all let me just show you guys all of them are starting down and they're all coming up right that's what i'm doing that is what's happening here and that's why i'm talking about you know the blue one i want to peak a little faster than you know all the other ones and that's what i mean by that so it's coming up a little faster than all the other ones and that's why i said that and uh, we're just going to quickly bring these things back in here Boom. This solid as well. Please. There we go. Cool. Oh. There we go. Alright, sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna just hide all the other things really quickly. All these other keyframes. All these other points with you. There we go. Now I have no more keyframes. I don't want to see any more keyframes because I'm pretty much done with this animation here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna do the last thing, which is obviously the logo flying in and all that cool stuff. So once you're confident and you're, you're, you're set with this, I don't wanna like, you know, drag this on for too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another new solid here. 
Uh, another new solid. I'm going to change this color to actually white. Press OK. Press OK again. And I just made it a little offset white. Just a little more not like completely white. But this is going to be like the logo fly in background. That's what this is, right? So this white here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is when you get your, your obviously your little solid here. I'm just going to make this just freaking background. Second background or whatever. Just so you guys know what's going on here. All right, so that's the background. We're going to make a new solid for the white, right, background. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our logo here. I already have mine in here. Nice little black logo. Put this in here. Right above that, uh, this little back, this white background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, of course, bring the, I'm going to press S on my keyboard. And it's going to bring the scale down. So I'm going to click on one of these. Bring the scale down to where I kind of want it. And I think, like, here is pretty good. No, oops. Why oh, did that? All right, cool. I think I pressed something to bring up these like little this like grid thing. How do I get rid of that? Guides, tiles. There we go. All right, cool. So basically, what I did was I just changed my scale down to like I'm gonna say about nine because I, I kind of like nine what I had before or ten is pretty good. Ten is okay. Basically, I'm just I just scaled my my logo down right because that's what I want to have it to the size at the end of the keyframe or the end of the scene. Actually, I might even drag it a little further down. I don't know. I'm a fan of like having it a little smaller. Uh, there we go. All right, cool. Perfect. Now, when you change your size, after you've done this, what you're going to want to do is, of course, you want to make your logo transparent because what I have here is my logo's transparent until it actually goes to a, uh, a solid color, which is the black, which is the original color that I had for the actual PNG. So what's going to happen here is I want to actually do that right now. But before we do that, I'm going to make sure that our scale is like set here. That's perfectly fine. That's cool. So really quickly, what you want to do is you're going to make it transparent. So to do that, you want to click on the white background, your white solid, and you want to bring up the actual toggle switches and modes. I already had mine on, but if you did not have yours on, that's how you click it on and off. And basically you see this little thing, TRK Mac, which is track mat. And what you want to do is you want to click on this one, which says none, right? Under BG, the solid white background, and go to alpha inverted mat, click on that. And then you're going to see it actually makes the actual logo transparent. So that's what's going to happen here when you do that. And you can see it's almost like clipping masking inside Photoshop. So once you've done this, you're pretty much good to start off uh, actually sizing it and scaling it in a different way. So to do that, we're going to actually make a null. And what nulls are basically is kind of like the same thing as null if you guys use like Cine 4D. It's just like, uh, it's like a, it's a layer that does nothing, right? But we're going to make it do something because that's going to be the way we're going to control our scale within like using a null. Because if you, if you try to scale with like using a logo here, uh, using like the scale for here to keyframe it. It's just really it's just you know awkward and it also we want to, we want to parent excuse me another uh, Image to this image here that way it actually does the same exact thing I'll show you guys what I mean in a second It's kind of hard for me to explain it, but I'm trying to explain it as best as I can basically you see this is another null that's just gonna, this is gonna be the null that controls our actual shape uh, You know transition so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna press S on the keyboard on this transition or Excuse me on this control PNG or excuse me, not control PNG, control null. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here. You see this right here? Click this right here. This is the parent. This is basically, it's gonna be like, you know, I'm gonna click here. It's kind of like clip masking again, kind of in a way. Um, you know, parent this to the control null, which basically means that anything you do to this layer, this logo is gonna be affected by it. So that's my way of like kind of explaining it. I'm like so lost in trying to explain that part, but that was, I just had to continue and I feel like I felt like I explained it better. Um, they said that's what this is right here. So whatever, what's gonna happen on this layer is gonna actually manipulate this logo right here. So this of course, we're gonna manipulate the scale. So at three frames here, I'm gonna change the scale and make sure I keyframe it just like so, right? I'm going about one really quickly, one frame, which is basically one second. And I'm gonna change the scale and I'm gonna make this go up. Right, I'm gonna bring this all the way up to the point till I can't see the actual logo anymore. So I'm bringing this all the way up, all the way, all the way up, because I want to have this like little flying feature. So all the way, I still see it a little bit here. Drag it just a little bit more, and basically now what's gonna happen? It's gonna fly in, and you're gonna see the logo just pop just like so. And this is kind of what I want to have. However, I'm gonna move my actual keyframes a little further because I don't want it to actually come in so fast. Something like this, maybe a little longer. Boom, and then it comes in. Perfect, that's how I wanna have it. So basically, if you want to, of course, you can also easy ease again, right? If you wanna do that, you could do that. We'll just easy ease it a little bit, make it come in a little smoother. Pretty much move these two things in, and then it comes in a little more smoother. I'm just gonna render it out really quick so you can see what I have going on here. Boom, and then the logo comes in nice and smooth. 
So, dun, dun, and then like, and then boom, right? That's perfect, but we don't actually have the actual color filled in yet. So it's still all transparent throughout the entire thing. So what we're gonna have to do is, we're gonna take our logo again, bring this back in. We're gonna drag this below the null, which is basically that little control layer that we just made. And we're just gonna call this fill. This is, the, this is the same exact PNG as before, but it's I'm gonna call it fill because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that it actually fills in the uh, the logo when it's actually done at the end, right? So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna really quickly do is I'm gonna change this scale on this fill to the same exact one as here. So I'm gonna look at what I have here for the scale on this actual first logo. It's at eight. I'm gonna change that to eight. And basically at the end of the keyframe, it's gonna be perfectly uh, aligned with the actual end of it, uh, the actual end of the first one with the first transparent logo. So once you've done this, all you're gonna wanna do is make sure you actually parent this fill, this uh, other, basically another duplicate of the logo to the first logo. That way it actually changes the uh, the scale with the actual black one as well. So as you can see, it actually changes the scale with the actual black logo as well, with also the transparent one being behind it. So if I just get rid of this really quickly, right? You can see the transparent one is behind it, but when I actually parented this this fill logo to it, this, this it's actually following the same exact thing. So what if, which pretty much can kind of guess what we're gonna be doing now is gonna change the opacity. So if you press T on your keyboard, that brings up the opacity. So pretty much gonna go at the end of the keyframe Make sure your opacity is at 100%, keyframe it. And then you wanna to go to basically where you wanna see it start to fill in. I would say around like here for me is what I want it to fill in. Basically take your opacity here, bring it all the way down to zero, and then you're pretty much set. You can see it's gonna start filling in right here if you look right here, 25%, 45%, and that's gonna be at 100 right at the end. That's basically how you get it to get you know transparent, and then it's gonna be a fill at the end. So, if I just quickly render this out in the preview, you have this, right? The logo landscapes come up, your logo flies in, and then you can put anything else, anything else you wanna have at the end, but I just want my logo there. And uh, you're pretty much all done. Basically to render it out, of course, you go to composition here and then go to uh, add to render queue, right? Just like so. It's gonna add this composition to the render queue. And then once you've done that, give me a second, it's like loading or something. There we go. Add to your render queue. Output, you just change all this cool stuff to the, like the best setting as possible. I'm not sure what your best setting, like settings are, but you know, I would kind of like, you know, probably Google that or whatever, YouTube that and kind of figure out what your best settings are and stuff like that. Uh, but once you're done, you pretty much render it out and you're good to go. And that's pretty much what we've done for the same exact, like what we have for the same exact intro for my current intro. Oh my goodness, we've done it. Okay, our first After Effects tutorial. And you guys literally couldn't, like, you guys don't know when to stop asking. But I'm glad because it pressured me to do this intro. Pressured me to learn a little bit about the basic motions of After Effects. I apologize if you're an After Effects prodigy and I'm not. And I'm just, like, kind of, like doing stuff a little slower than I usually would probably go about in like Photoshop or Illustrator tutorials. However, I think I did pretty good. I think at the end of this tutorial, you should be able to, you know, create your own cool little silhouette background animation where it looks pretty awesome. As I said before, check the description down below for all the images that I've used for this tutorial here today. They're going to be manipulated. They're going to be manipulated a little differently though, because I don't want to have like my exact images be, you know, around YouTube because I want to have my, of course, my intro be a little cooler and a little original. So that is that. I hope you guys enjoyed. Do not forget to leave a like on the video. 200 likes equals the secret download of this actual, uh, you know, tutorial. So you can see, like, I'm probably gonna give away this little PNG, or excuse me, not PNG, uh, this little uh, After Effects file. That way you can, like, kind of, like, manipulate it, learn it yourself within actually having the exact same file that we just did for the tutorial. Uh, also, but you're not gonna, you're already gonna have the PNGs, though. Those are gonna be in the description down below. However, the project file, if you guys want it, 200 likes on the video for the secret download. And uh, yeah, do not forget to follow me on Twitter, at SysOHQ. Also, do not forget to check out my Selfie, Selfie.com slash SysOHQ for any pre mades and packs as low as three bucks. It's really freaking awesome. The everything pack is one purchase of $30. You get everything in my store for one purchase of $30. And anything that comes out of my store, it gets emailed to you guys for free updates, other products, all that cool stuff. Thank you guys so much for freaking watching. As I said before, how, how did I do? Did I do good? Did you guys like it? I hope you guys like freaking end up making your own cool little animation, uh, silhouette animation, uh, kind of 2D tutorial, 2D intro. There we go. And uh, yeah, I'm done. 
currently figuring out what the hell's happening with this Trump inauguration thing. So I'm going to go ahead and watch that and figure out why my life is probably going to be crap for the next four months, four years. Uh, I'm just kidding. If you're a Trump supporter, then all power to you. We got to... I'm going to stop talking about this. It's going to start a really big thing in the back like the, the freaking comment section. Anyway, I'm done. I'll talk to you guys later. Sisso HQ out. Keep smiling. Stay positive and stay productive. Peace.